Hello and welcome and in this video we'll be talking about the VR Comp Editor within After Effects. So within After Effects uh, there's a little hidden tool, a JavaScript that was included since CC 2018 and by default this is typically uh, disabled. So in one of the previous videos I kind of briefly explained how to turn this on but I'm just going to quickly go over a refresher now. If we go to Edit, Preferences, Scripting and Expressions before we do anything, we just want to make sure that the allow scripts to write files and access network is enabled. So what the VR Comp Editor is, is basically it converts your 360 or 2x1 composition into a VR preview. So at the moment, uh, we have this uh, piece of 360 footage here that I just captured natively on a Insta360 uh, Insta One R. This is a two by one ratio. So by default, this is the kind of correct ratio for um, equitangular conversion. And as you can kind of see here, I have started adding elements. So I actually created a little composition here. So if I just double click on my little sign here. So I just create this super simple little image that have a sign that goes up and down. Created a little line or rectangle with a mask and then just created duplicated my video layer twice create a mask so it looks like the pole is going into the water when in fact it's actually the video clip laid above itself with a cutout to reveal our sign composition animation uh, in between the layers like a sandwich so the way we use VR comp editor is we typically don't uh, tr we try not to implement it until towards the end of our workflow within uh, 360 footage. Uh, largely because if we was to convert our footage to a VR 360 preview now, uh, although we can go back and rework things, uh, we can sometimes encounter some weird little issues. So the process I tend to follow is I will tend to create a composition or work on the composition of my 360 footage and add my elements like you can see here and then what I'll typically do is I'll just create a new composition which I will call my final 360 render and I will within this new composition that I've created I will input the values um, of my 360 footage so in this case the footage captured was 5760 by 2880 pixels uh, or a 2 to 1 aspect ratio I'm going to keep the frame rate at 25 because that's what I recorded it in uh, on the camera. And I'm going to keep the duration set to be around the length of my video clip. Again, if I was stitching together clips, I would adjust my duration or frame rate depending on what it is I'm trying to do. My resolution here is more for the preview, so I'm just going to turn this to full for the time being. And then I'm going to hit OK. And what I tend to do is I tend to create a composition that's going to house all my other composition elements in. That way I don't um, get restricted because once I start converting my composition into a 360 output, uh, it's very then hard to add anything onto my composition as is because uh, it kind of nestles it or hides it away. But by having this kind of third or final composition um, option, I use this as my output and I would essentially import my composition elements into this final uh, composition uh, layer. What this allows me to do now is it means I can, within this uh, final output, still add in compositions and still add in text or other clips or audio, etc. However, if I want to actually edit one of my uh, elements, I can still double click on that composition that's contained within this final composition and still continue to work and tweak things as I feel fit. Let me just trim my comp length down a little bit. Okay, so now I have my uh, composition and I, let's say I was finished creating my VFX shot or finished creating my 360 footage or etc. in this case I'm not going to add a super amount to it, but I could do sky replacements or 
add some text in. And again, we'll look at individual elements and 2D and 3D tracking within After Effects in the dedicated videos within this series. But um, if I want to start looking at the composition editor, it can be found under Window, VR Comp Editor. And in this VR Comp Editor, we have two options. We have the Add 2D Edit and the Add 3D Edit. So the 2D edit will be where we've got a static camera. We're not going to be housing any 3D tracking data. We're not going to have things kind of have the camera move into our footage. Now, bearing in mind, even if your 360 camera is moving, uh, adding a 3D element on top to have a second camera and then moving out within it does not replace the footage that's filmed because the footage you filmed is still flat, so, but wrapped within the sphere. All this adding an extra camera within the 3D edit would do is allow you to move the camera on the z-axis and it'll start to obviously as you start to zoom in start to pixelate if you uh, kind of get too close with the 360 footage because it's basically zooming in on the pixels so because my footage here is quite static and there's not a lot of movement I'm just going to keep to the 2D edit we can now look at the 3D edit when we look at 3D tracking but I'm just going to add a 2D edit and I'm going to make sure that I select my final composition that's going to house all my other 360 elements and nestle them all together within. So I've got my final 360 render here. I'm going to keep the composition width to 1920 or, um, or aspect ratio 16 by 9. That'll be a, the typical kind of screen output for like YouTube or most TVs or screens. It's the most average kind of composition size really, I suppose, 1920 by 1080. 1080p is still de facto for most people. Um, obviously, if we was to output this in 4K, we can increase that to a 4K width. I'm going to keep the camera settings to using a two, uh, a two node camera, which is basically just a X and Y camera without the Z depth. I'm not going to use a null camera control. And I'm not going to center camera. Uh, center camera is uh, essentially works like an offset, but I don't want to control offset using center camera. If I was to want to change my starting point in my 360 footage, I would use offset on the composition itself. So I'm just going to add 2D edit. This will now create a new folder. So we'll notice over in our project, we have this folder called final free uh, output. Just starts up, there we go. So you can just see a bit clearer. So we've got a final 360 render folder. Inside there is our VR edit one, our VR edit two, which will also open up down here, alongside this little support pre-comps folder here. The, under the uh, VR competitor, which is this little window here, you'll also notice we have edit one, which is this edit or this uh, output. We can reorient, which um, again works the same as an offset, but again, it's much it's more recommended to use offset on the composition rather than trying to use reorient um, just because again you can start to get some quite weird results if you're using reorient and you just don't have that quite that control that you would get if you used to manually do it yourself. Under properties this is just where we can rename our edit. If you're using a 3D track we have a few more options uh, which again we'll explore when we look at 3D tracking. And the open output slash render, if I click on that, this just opens up our converted 360 footage here. So you'll notice we've got this final 360 render VR2 output. This is essentially this composition here, which would have our nestled elements together. So let's say I was to just quickly create another layer in here and just go. Hello world. And just move this somewhere over here, for example, and then go back to my VR2 output. What this does is this VR2 output render basically takes everything that was within this composition, so all these elements that we have nestled here, and flattens them, essentially, or builds a comp within a composition to give us a kind of our final output. This is the, this is the kind of view that will be exported at the end, and this is the kind of... Um, file that we'll be um, exporting once we finish our workflow. If we just go back over to the other uh, compositions created, which is the Final 360 Render VR2 Edit 1, you'll notice that this one here is 16 
uh, so 1920 by 1080. And it's basically give us the kind of center point of our view here. So the center of our camera is positioned here. You can see the Brayford pool, you can see. So if we were to take like a 1920 by 1080 crop of this, that is what view we have here. However, this actually is not a static shot. This is actually our 360 footage wrapped around the sphere, but it's just giving us that kind of window glimpse. And the way I can tell that is if I press C to bring up my camera controls, I have this little option here where you can see a little like uh, planet with a little arrow orbit thing around it. Or if I go up to the top here and click on this camera here with an orbit around cur cursor tool, I can now click and hold and you'll notice I can move around my 360 footage. So this here is a kind of emulation of what it would look like on a VR player. So whether that's YouTube, Facebook or VR headset. So this is a good way of previewing whether your 360 composition or effect, uh, kind of After Effect file, what it will kind of look like in a VR device without exporting it at this point and although it's going to be quite subtle um, and I've got um, full render so I'm just going to half the resolution a little bit because it does take a while to render you'll find that when you're render re rendering or working on 360 files within After Effects uh, it will have some system impact so do that in mind these files are quite large and you do need to kind of allocate suitable memory in order to be able to work with these files. But any element that's within my nestled composition, so any movement, any um, keyframing I do, will be contained within our output. So this is the view that we're exporting. This is a kind of preview of what it will look like on a headset. Now. Don't do what I've just done there. If you click and, click and drag, you can actually move the compositions around, which you do not want to do. So I tend to recommend that within the VR edit window, that we actually click on a little padlock next to our final composition. And that way, we now can't accidentally click and drag. And we're using the camera tool to basically generate our preview. OK. So we'll be using the VR Comp Editor to work with our VFX shots within After Effects. We'll also be using it for our 2D tracking and 3D tracking. It's our preview tool. It will be the tool that we use to create the final composition that we'll be exporting within After Effects. And you just need to remember that your composition sizes need to all retain the 2 by 1 ratio. It's still fine though to have elements like this little circle sign here. They don't have to contain be the same composition size as your footage. So for example, this sign here is just 500 by 500 pixels. And because it's on a transparent background, or uh, set to be transparent essentially, when I bring it into my composition here, it still retains all of that uh, information. And I can now move it around like so. So if I sort of drag this up a bit over here, let's say, uh, you'll notice that it's kind of, um, the masking is kind of applied. I haven't done a perfect mask. It's starting to now creep over the edge where I've kind of uh, got a bit relaxed with my masking. But I could, for example, with this sign now have even more animation to it. So I could keyframe this composition within another composition. And it's again, I tend to find the nestling of compositions to be, um, to give maximum control of each element. Um, however, proper naming conventions and uh, kind of maybe writing down a, doc a work document as you're doing it just to keep track of what files associ are associated to what element is just good practice. So the VR Comp Editor is the tool that we'll be using quite a bit. I'm not going to go through all of its uh, nuances in this video. This is just a kind of overview of the VR Comp Editor. And it is essentially our tool for previewing our 360 footage and creating our final output file in a more convenient manner. But theoretically, though, we don't actually need to use the comp editor. We could also just actually win this composition here that has all our elements in. We could also just export this. However, if we want to get a sense of what it will look like on a VR player, 
then we need to use a VR competitor to allow us to access this kind of view. So I've been Steen Fisher. This has been a, another video in the Working in 360 series on YouTube. So remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in future videos. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Goodbye.